Chicago, Illinois, pictures of Chicago, which is uh, now 25, almost 26 minutes into the third millennium. From Chicago, we're going to go back to a city where it seems like it was hours ago that New York uh, joined the new millennium, but actually it was just an hour and 26 minutes ago. Our own Fred Hickman. Fred, are you still there? I am still standing by, Judy, and you know, that's so correct. I look down here now at, uh, at, at Broadway and down toward Times Square, uh, where there was once a sea of people, and now it's pretty much clearing out, and it didn't take long for the people to start to leave. But the people who are coming in now happen to be the guys wearing green, and they're carrying the long brooms, trying to clear out some of this uh, four tons of confetti. If we could take a look uh, down here at the uh, intersection of 46th and Broadway, you can see that the police officers now are starting to move down the barricades, and uh, the cleanup crews are in working. Although the celebration, in essence, is going to continue until 6 a.m., until the last time zone crosses over into the uh, new millennium, into the year 2000. But we do have some information to give you from the mayor's office, from the deputy mayor, in fact, who unofficially says that between 2 and 3 million people we're in Times Square to bring in the new year. Between two and three million people clearly smashing all records for any previous uh, celebrations here uh, to bring in a new year. The 94 years they've been doing it. Also, some great news uh, from the mayor's office indicating that there were no Y2K glitches to report at this time. All electrical systems, all water systems, everything seems to be working just fine as we uh, move into the year 2000. So, all in all, it's been great. It's been incident-free. Uh, the people have been wonderful. Uh, uh, I've seen police officers embracing different folks, just kind of walking along. We've seen people get engaged and dancing and, you know, mambo lines and the whole bit. Uh, so it's been a quite memorable uh, situation here, quite incident-free. And, boy, I wish every party were like this, Judy. Boy, Fred, you, you know, you make it look like a lot of fun, and it, and it is a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work. And I think the fact that New York City has been able to get this far without any a uh, troubling incident is uh, in no small part due to the very hard work of a lot of security people, police, and a lot of other folks who uh, were at their desks or doing their jobs. And uh, I think the citizens of New York and the tourists in New York have them to thank, wouldn't you say? Oh, I think that's absolutely true, Judy. 37,000 police officers were on duty this evening. 8,000 in uniform, and that's not including all the people who were out of uniform and working in plain clothes, working in the streets here. Just the security operation was three years in the making, an operation by the, uh, by, that went by the code name of Archangel. The FBI was working on it. The N uh, NYPD was working on it. So all of those people concerned with security. Uh, as far as the citizens of New York, you can't say enough about them. It's hard to say how many of those people actually showed up here in the square. They say that a small percentage of New Yorkers actually make it here, and most of them happen to be tourists. I don't believe that. I think New Yorkers are a little bit tough, and maybe they don't want to admit they came down, but I think plenty of New Yorkers were here in Times Square tonight. And everybody working in concert, all the business people here in the Times Square area just pulled off a terrific job, and it was a real pleasure to be here. They sure did, and I, and I, uh, you know, I read about uh, the police. Even the police bought those MREs, meals, ready to eat enough for a 30-day yes. supply. I also read that the city had an elevator a SWAT team, a team of people ready to go around to different, uh, I guess, uh, skyscrapers in case the elevators broke down. Uh, yeah. No well, it's like they say, hope for the best and uh, exactly. see what you get. Exactly. And then there was this other guy, this other familiar face on CNN who uh, has spent this evening and on into the wee hours in Washington, D.C. He's our own beloved Wolf Blitzer. Wolf, are they still partying? Well, basically this place, the Washington Monument area, the Washington Reflecting Pool, the Lincoln Memorial, there are a few people still here, but it's basically emptied out. They got out shortly after 1 a.m., about a half an hour or so ago, after another round of fireworks over the Lincoln Memorial. But the place was packed earlier, and at, at the stroke of midnight, there really was a spectacular demonstration of fireworks here in Washington. Let's take a replay of what occurred at midnight about 90 minutes ago.
course, uh, there was uh, an enormous crowd here, probably not as big as Times Square, but for Washington standards, very, very big. They were packed along both sides of the reflecting pool. People had come from all over. Crowds much bigger than I anticipated. Uh, obviously, people encouraged to go out, A, by the relatively mild weather, and B, by the fact that there had been no serious Y2K computer glitches that had been reported in other time zones earlier in the day. And people did revel here at, at the Washington uh, reflecting pool. In fact, some people got into the reflecting pool themselves. They were dancing. They were having a lot of fun. Uh, everything was really, really smooth. The district uh, police, the park police, all of those involved in ma managing this very huge operation managed to get through without any serious incidents, and everyone seemed to be very, very happy. And as I said, now it's relatively, uh, there's only a few people who are left here. It's amazing how tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people, Bernie and Judy, can come to an area like this, but within a matter of minutes, they've dispersed, they've gone home or wherever they were going, but they're certainly not here anymore. Bernie, Judy? Wolf, uh, just one question uh, about President Clinton's remarks. You've covered uh, this man for most of his presidency. Uh, up until very recently. Any thoughts, uh, observations about what he had to say in the few minutes before midnight? He was speaking for himself. He thought a lot about the six and a half minutes that he spoke about. The first lady was intimately involved in preparing all of these millennium operations over the past year and a half. This was not just an overnight wonder what, what, what occurred here. The president uh, is now about to enter his last year in office. He's getting rather nostalgic by all accounts. He wants to now the first year of this new millennium, this new century, squeeze as much as he possibly can in the remaining one year of his own presidency. He's going to be doing a lot. He's going to be very active. And I think some of that activity, some of the objectives that he wants to achieve in the coming year were reflected in the brief remarks just before midnight here at the Lincoln Memorial. All right, Wolf Blitzer reporting uh, from the mall in Washington, D.C., where the celebration was big. It was spectacular. And uh, as you see, uh, it's starting to clear out now, but uh, the likes of which Washington won't see for quite some time. We're going to take a break. We're coming up on 27 minutes before 2 o'clock Eastern time, but 27 minutes until the mountain time zone and parts of Canada observe the new millennium. We'll be right back.